Welcome to Corralling the Chaos podcast, where we talk publicly about the things you're worried about privately. My name is Angela Lea, and I'm your host. This is the event industry podcast for companies and crew, where we're going to dive deep into things like, what does our industry need that it just doesn't have? What are the things you want to know, but you're just too afraid to ask? And what are the biggest opportunities ahead for our industry? We're going to go deep and nothing is off limits. Welcome everyone to another episode of Corralling the Chaos. Today we're going to dive into all things training the great talent out there within the event industry. And to help me do that today, I have Omar Colom with me today. He is a U.S. Army veteran with over two dozen decorations awarded to his name for actions while serving two tours of combat duty in the Middle East. He's also a proud father. He is the founder of AV Educate, a leading resource for audiovisual training and the national director of education for Evolve Technology. He's also a second generation industry professional and is an accomplished video engineer with many years of experience as a projectionist, high resolution switching specialist and graphic designer. He also holds over a dozen broadcast and professional video training certification and an associate degree in film and digital production. So as you can see, he is clearly qualified to help us dig into all things training and skill sets within our industry. So welcome, Omar. So glad you're here. No, thanks for having me. And with that type of introduction, I was about to say, hey, thanks for having me. I'm out of here. That was, that was fantastic. <laughs> on a high what, note, else, right? what else we need Drop to cover right here, right? That's right. <laughs> well, I know. It's been, I've been really excited about this particular episode because I've personally had a chance to see you in action. I know we've partnered on a few things and a few training initiatives in the past, but I'm really excited to have you on today to really discuss the state of our industry right now because there's a lot of skill gaps, so much opportunity. People can't get trained fast enough and all while the needs are changing fast, right? As soon as we think we know what we need and we train people up, there's new revisions and new things coming out. And so it's just this constant wheel of catching up to be trained. So I'm really excited to kind of have you help us dig into this. Um, You've obviously spent a lot of your career paying it forward, teaching so many of the talented folks in our industry. So why are you so passionate about that? I mean, you're a tech, you're at show sites, yet you've kind of taken this path to take on training and paying it forward. So why is that? When I did this, you know, 12, 13 years ago, when I started, there was no resource like, like what I have now. So it's kind of, I was building that for myself for a very long time. And then out of, out of necessity, I had another job I had previously, I became the trainer for that company. And for, for, I'll say the name PSAV for back in the day, which is now gone. But PSAV, I used to be the, the director for the Fountain Blue, and I was in charge of uh, training for the whole company. Um, and it wasn't until I did a show afterwards where I met uh, Michael Hudson on a show. I think in D.C. we were doing a show together. And he, he had asked me about a PowerPoint that I created on LinkedIn called Signal Flow. And it was one of those moments where I was like, man, someone who I look up to and someone who taught me stuff is looking at my content and learning from it. And I was like, man, I didn't realize anybody was even looking at this stuff other than the employees at the company. Uh, I just posted it as, let me get it out there. And then that's what kind of started the whole AV Educator umbrella. Uh, And then from that, honestly, the feedback from the the community in general was great. Um, One of the things that I've realized in the last couple of years, even just from starting AV Educate, is that there there is a lot of training for different things, but everybody's isolated and siloed in their own kind Mm -hmm. of worlds. And unless you know about them, it's hard to find them, right? And no one was giving that kind of resource or or putting it together. Uh, so one of the main things with AV Educate that I did is I, is I brought it all under one umbrella and I brought it all into to this one unison. And then again, feedback from the community. You know, it started off double-sided. There were some negatives and some positives, uh, but majority of it was positive. And I kept hearing this good feedback and it's kind of what kept me going. Um, so honestly, if you guys have watched anything and you guys just want to message me and let me know what's up, that, that fuels me to continue to do what I do. Um, and also I know that there's people that I've met in the industry who have moved up from it and have gained from it and have benefited from it. And that, again, reinforces what I'm doing and makes me feel good about what's going on and just like makes me want to continue giving back to the community because I also learn from these guys and I get opportunities that open up to me because of because of that. Uh, so it's not it's not always a one way streak. I do like to pay it forward and, you know, I don't expect anything, but a lot does come back and, I, and it really just keeps driving me and pushing me forward to go to that next thing. Like, how do I improve the process? How do I make it better? How do I do this? And then, you know, going back to where we started um, for corporate AV, mm-hmm. particularly uh, live events has kind of a, their own thing. Uh, installation definitely has its own industry, 
but corporate AV doesn't. And we we pull from so many resources. We pull from broadcast, we pull from theater, we pull from live events, concerts, signing on different parts, you know, different parts pull from different things. But again, it's all it's all different fields, different different things. But we we as a corporate AV pull from that, and there was no centralized location for that. So I I wanted to build it. I wanted to create that. And then uh, back to what you said earlier about I me, mean, the second generation part. You know, I learned a lot from my father, and I and I had a, a you know, I guess a head start from people. I, my dad owns a company called Media Stage. I was able to work for him for a long time. I was able to get my feet in the door, get you know, get access to gear, and just get hands on with that yeah. and talk to people in general. So you know, I knew about this industry coming in, um, but I think the difference is that I had someone to 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 bounce ideas off to and to talk to about stuff. And uh, him being part of the you know, him being an owner and knowing all the gear and we wanted to specialize, it was more like read the manuals. Yeah. Um, and again, it's, it sounds like such an easy thing to do, but if you don't have that gear with, with you, reading the manual can be a little bit difficult, yeah. right? So I wanted to make this community where everything comes together. And it's, it's, again, it's taking, you know, a step back from my own life and seeing what other people have and what their abilities are and, and talking to them and realizing that, you know what, this is a really easy way for the community to get together and to have a platform to just share that stuff. And, and it's gotten there to what it is now, right? Nationwide shares on there, Evolve shares on there. Um, other other communities that are doing smaller events are sharing on there. Uh, TV One shares on there sometimes some of the outside content. Like people are starting to see that as a place to just share content for the community so they can benefit from that and, and grow. Um, and again, that, that that just fuels me and what I want to do uh, moving forward. And it just keeps, keeps me going. Honestly, it's it's a labor of love right now, and um, it's been cool. I mean, it's, it's why I'm here too, right? I love the altruism in it, right? Because I mean, it's great because you had somebody in your dad, which we don't hear that ever actually, right? It's kind of like, oh, it's a cool industry. You know, I worked as, you know, a hand in a show and I was like, oh, it's kind of cool, this industry. I, I should probably stick with it. And then they're kind of on their own. And so, you know, or they or they go to school for it and then they they come out and as freelancers, there's there's no career path. There's no, no one to really kind of invest, put their arm around them, take them under their wing, escort them into the industry, invest in training, they're kind of on their own to make their own career, figure out what the training is, uh, you try to find a mentor, um, which is hard when people are mobile and traveling, and it, it's really hard to have that consistency. So I love the fact that you identified that your experience was not the same experience as everybody else, and you wanted to give them a fighting chance to to really make something in this industry. So I I, I absolutely love that. I wish more people would do that. I think a lot of the trainings today, which I get, it's part of where we are, are more self-serving. I'm going to go train my people so I can benefit versus let's just do something great for the industry. The, some of these people may or may not come back and work and for me, still. right? But at the end of the day, I'm going to make the industry yeah. better because the more people that are trained up, the more we can entice more people to join the industry. And I think that's what it's all about right now is leveling up getting everybody's skills to where they need them to be, not just the book knowledge, but the on hands knowledge and having the experience uh, to actually use that. So I absolutely love that. Um, would love to get your thoughts on kind of what you see as far as what are the biggest skill gaps we have right now in the production space? What's the highest demand and the lowest supply out there? Yeah, so I would say it's, it's a tricky question. There, there is a. I think there's a higher demand for for hands in general that are more skilled, um, but not necessarily mm -hmm. as stage hands, more as technicians. Uh, and why I say it's true, your question is because I, I see a change happening in the industry where, you know, because of the the recent pandemic that just happened, th the way AV is done has changed a lot. Uh, the technology has changed; it's advanced a lot. The way we do things is changing. And now with IP being introduced a lot more and more with the digital, with, sorry, with audio and video coming in, you know, NDI, Dante, things like that. That's also changing the game a lot, and it's it's requiring more skills into more things other than just the AV side. And in addition to that, it's also requiring yeah. technicians because of what they're used to for virtual events, right? More technicians to do more mm -hmm. positions as a one-man band, and that's becoming more of a requirement more than that, hey, this is like doesn't happen all the time, you know, or it shouldn't happen all the time ideally, but it does. And now it's becoming more of the norm because more and more technicians that came out of the pandemic successfully are taking those roles and they're taking those positions because they want to work. They've raised their rates, and now they're doing that position where they're doing the, you know, the audio, the video, the graphics, the playbacks. They're doing a lot of things all at once, and it's becoming more of the norm where you have one person doing multiple things. So now, you're not, now you have to specialize in something to get the gig, but you also have to be cross-trained in other things in order to stay on the gig. 
You're not just doing this one position anymore. And not to say that that happens all the time, but especially in breakout rooms right yeah. now, which is what I cater to, you're seeing a lot more. Under the under Evolve, obviously we still cater to a specifically high-end uh, engineer who wants to do those specific things. Um, and you're seeing that a lot still, mm -hmm. but you're also seeing the in-between where, yeah, I might be doing projection, for example, but I'm also doing graphics and playback. So now you can't just be the projectionist. You could be a great expert at that, but you're also be doing this, you know, yeah. you could be great at media service. Yeah. The key is to not be a one hit yeah. wonder. Yeah. You have to be really kind of multifaceted because these shows are requiring that. And the reality is, I mean, with 38% leaving, you need to be able to do a little bit yep. of everything, right? And what and what that's called. And so I think it also, I know you and I have talked about in the past, you know, there's there's no standard way of what we call positions and what one company calls it. It means something totally different to another. And I think, you know, as you think about the need to really be multifaceted, what is that new position yeah. called? Should it be called something different, right? Versus I need you to be a combination of these three things. Well, what is that moving yep. forward, right? Because I do think things are beginning to kind of stabilize and settle, and it looks very different than it did. Um, and, and not even because of COVID. I think it just looks different with the evolution of events and what else possible. You know, events now, they're they're way different than they were five yep. years ago um, with, with the capabilities. So I think just rethinking and redefining, let's not even call them position names, right? It's your discipline. What, what's your discipline? Right. Um, and that discipline can cover a multitude of things. And so I think that's good advice for people just entering the industry. Don't get too specific. Um, be able to go deep and wide because the demand for people who've mastered that, it's pretty yeah. big. It's great. Huge. As a 10 and a 9 uh, you know, person out there freelancing, the industry does not, the in, not even the industry, the industry caters to us internally. Outside of us, government, taxes, insurance, none of them, they don't care about anything we do. So even, even that point is like, we are creating, you know, last week you guys are doing an amazing job with those reports you do, those white papers you bring out, right? We're kind of creating these new standards so that our industry has somewhere to go and a place to do it. You know, like you said a little bit earlier about, you know, if you're a 1099 employee and you're a freelancer, there is no, there is no guide to move up in the industry, right? There is no like source to do that. But if you're, if you're in the industry and you learn things, right, there are guys who are talking about this, you know, Clem's got the books out about, you know, uh, creating your own career path and uh, and having the idea from start to finish mm -hmm. right the other idea is too is like as you move up in your industry as you mentor somebody right that's that's the only real way that i've that i've figured out at least to move up is that in order for me to get a new set of clients with higher rates or, or more positions that i want to do i should train my replacement so that i don't lose these guys but so that i'm, I'm essentially moving up the, my own internal ladder because there's no corporate umbrella here right moving up that internal ladder here yeah. so that now I can do these positions more because this is what I want to do more and get paid more to do. But I've also replaced myself by, by bringing in somebody else who's, who's going to not leave a hole for the industry. And that's like one way to move up, right? But no one's talking about that because that's not a real thing. It's, it's something that I thought of that, hey, this is how I want to move up. It's interesting because I, I really, um, when we talk to people, there, there's kind of two schools of thought when it comes to mentoring and teaching and kind of bringing somebody along with them. You've got those who get it um, and they're like, yeah, absolutely. But what we hear more than not, and I so wish this would change, is this mentality of why should I help somebody else become the same level I am or better? Because that's just my competition. And it's just such an, I don't know, I'm just going to be real. It's so it ugly. Is. It's just an ugly um, mindset, you know, because at the end of the day, no matter who you are in this industry, you met somebody along the way that you learned something from, even if you had to take the lead. Like, I love the people in our industry who are like, I'm going to go find a mentor. I'm going to go find somebody. I'm going to identify them. I'm going to be intentional in telling them what I, what I want to know from them. I'm not going to waste their time. I'm going to be intentional in what I want to learn. And when you are, people are generally happy to do that. I just wish we had more of those in the industry versus everybody just trying to, you know, cut everybody off at the heels and nobody else can kind of climb the ladder because I just, I don't, I don't think there's room for that in our industry. Um, I really don't. And I think those are, are really beginning to kind of um, corner themselves off, if you will. And people are identifying, they're, they're taking notes of the ones who kind of like you, you know, they're, they're altruistic. They're trying to pay it forward, right? At the end of the day, there's plenty here to make a very good living for any single person that wants to join the industry. There's so much opportunity. So I just, 
I wish there was more of that altruism versus the being overly territorial and protective of, you know, what their skills are. So I think that's a really great call out and something I'd love to see. I think people are trying to change that mentality. And, and again, it goes back to what I said about the ladder. Like, if you want to move up in the industry, you need to train their replacements. You need to train someone to be just like you. And then on the other side to that, not to sound rude to anybody who's, who has this mentality, but you, you might be stuck in your ways and not realizing that you, you're not going to move up at all because you don't think that if you help somebody out, they're going to, you think they're going to take your spot. If you're secure in your job, you're secure in your skill set and your ability to communicate with your clients, you're not going to lose anything. If anything, your clients can come to you more for help for those types of things for those types of scenarios and vice versa. If you train that person to train you up, they're going to also come back to you for things and they're going to give you stuff that they can't take either. So it'll be a sharing system that, you know, if you're training, if you're surrounded by people who, you know, if you taught this guy, he's going to take your job and like probably shouldn't be with that person, you know? And, and, and I, I would like to think in our industry, we, we tend to weed those people out. If you're here for a quick buck, you won't be here very long. We tend to weed that out. If you're in here to be, this is my job and you go over there and do your thing you will get weeded out. That old white glover mentality, that, that's starting to get old and people are starting to get rid of that stuff. There's the younger guys who are more eager, more, more, more hungry than, than you, who want to come in, get stuff done and help the people around them. And they want to get done things faster and better. Yep. And I'm starting to see a lot of the older mentality yep. where it's, this is me, I do my thing, you do your thing over there, I'll tell you what to do. That's starting to get phased up because that, that, that's not copacetic anymore with clients or with or with producers. Well, what can people do like when you think about newer people that maybe been in the industry a couple years, but they're wanting to kind of, you know, push the envelope, what would you recommend that they do to increase their skills and level up? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously education, I think is, is the one thing, right? You know, one, one thing I'll say, you know, a lot of people who meet me like, oh, you're this video genius, all this stuff. It's like, it's not that I'm a genius. I, you know, I've been at this for at least 10 years now. So I have some, some clarity of understanding, but I also, I've committed myself and a lot of people that I work with a lot, a lot in the industry repeatedly. We also take time once a year to do training on something. It doesn't matter what it is. You don't have to go and do go out this summer and do three, you know, a class a month and get take one thing a year, just just that bare minimum, right? One thing a year, whether it's three days, three months, a day class, whatever it is, just do one class a year. So, what what are some of the places they can go? Obviously, you work with Evolve. So, like, talk to us about what some of the best training initiatives and programs are. Yeah. Out there. So, so right now, if you're a stagehand looking to be a technician. AV Educate is probably one of your only resources uh, for corporate AV. If you're a uh, stagehand looking to be a technician for, let's say, it's a breakout room, AV Educate is a great resource, as well as a resource to other channels of, of venue. Audio, video, lighting, it's all shared there and co it comes together. There's an entire file section if you're a self learner, right? 150 plus files of PDFs you can download and read up. You want to go to YouTube as well. YouTube has great stuff. Here's what I'll say about YouTube real quick, though YouTube is a lot of theoretical. Uh, and what I, what I mean by that is you're going to learn a lot of things visually. But until you get the hands on with that, it's not the same thing. Knowing what a fader does and when to use that fader are two different things. That's experience versus knowledge. YouTube will give you some knowledge, but not the experience you need. In this industry, you need both. There's a crossroad that you need to meet to. If you want to learn about installation or want to get some basic knowledge on general AV stuff, Avixia has a great course for the CTS, right? If you want to learn more of the advanced stuff, you want to become an engineer and you want, or sorry, a technician to an engineer, go to Evolve, go to Nationwide. You know, they offer classes for that higher level tier things. You're going to pay for those a little bit more. But they'll pay you back within a sh within one show. You got a show for three days. Any class you take with these companies will pay you back. That that that's how quick the revenue is. You do that training. You 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 also got to do due diligence. I, let me say this too: when you do these trainings, don't just do it and just post to social media. If you have clients that you talk to, you have a labor company you talk to, just send them an email. The fact that somebody knows that you did that is going to help you get that gig for that position. If you don't tell anybody and you just post on social media, I don't follow a ton of people on social media. I don't follow a ton of my students. I have no idea if they post sometimes. Your clients are the same. They're not all following you. And if they are, they're not all looking at your feed all the time, right? When you get that stuff, whether you take pictures of it, whether you have a certificate, just send it to your clients. Hey, I did this class. Da -da -da -da, here's what I did. Put a little summary in there of what happened. That will put your name and that position in the top of their minds. And they may say, you know what? I've trusted you for a long time. You've done a lot of work for me. Let me put you in this position because I have something coming up. Or vice versa, the next test that comes up with the next few weeks, oh, you know what, I got this. And put it in your email chain, trained on, da 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 Put it in there. Make people aware of it. Don't just take the class and then hope you get the position because that's not that's not realistic. So there is some work that you have to do on your end. <laughs> There's a book out there called Hope is Not a Strategy. you got to actually you gotta do, do more. more. Yeah, and, and it, it, it's, part of the, it's part of the puzzle there. But yeah, AV Educated, if you guys want to, uh, are starting out right now, it's a free source to get you up to speed. The idea is essentially that, you can get some fundamental training, some fundamental knowledge, move up to a higher paying position, 
they can help pay you for those other classes. Now, is that the only sources? No, there's there's more sources. You can go to the manufacturers. Novastar does this stuff. Barco does this stuff. Dante has free training online. Uh, again, we've shared that multiple times and including free training for Dante online on, in the AVG channel because it is, it is a network uh, source for everybody to, to, uh, to gather from. There is two courses for lighting. Uh, you can go to the manufacturer directly and get some training from them. Uh, Grand MA has a course online. Hog has a course online. Ross has a course online. And again, the online stuff is good up to a point because you can only learn so much visually. You have to get the hands on to, to connect the dots. You know, um, a lot of a lot of systems now. I know I said I know I said this earlier. A lot of systems now are having a virtual simulator. Black Magic has a virtual simulator. Aqualon virtual simulator. E2 virtual simulator. You can do the online classes, get the simulator, and now you've gone from theoretical to practical. Then you, now you need the experience, right? That again it elevates you. But mm -hmm. like you were saying a little bit earlier here, it's not hope. It's putting in that extra effort to get there. For example, AV Tech Talks that we did twice a month, we were doing classes, free classes online. Trust me, I was learning just as much as those guys that were doing the classes. And I was asking all kinds of questions. And now what really ends up happening is that you watch something or you read something, right? Books are a fantastic way to also expand in your knowledge. And don't just stick to corporate AV stuff. Do other things outside. Do pottery. Do, do an art class. Those little things that you do outside of that will connect dots for other things in your world of what you see the world as. It'll connect things to open up for you. One of the things I love about AV Tech Talks is there's there's been numerous scenarios in the last three years that I've been like, oh, you know what? I remember this does this because the guy said this. Let me look at the menu real quick and see where that's at. I, I completely forgot where it was, or, but I remembered, right? Because of something. Oh, you know what? This was a thing we talked about. Let me look this up real quick. Oh, here it is. Hey, here you go. How many times do you go on site, like you're saying, right? Getting a mentor or somebody. How many times do you go have on site and they're like, hey, look, let's sit down with me. Let's, let's do a talk about this. Let's go over some things. Never. That never happens unless you're in show, show mode and that opportunity arises. The reality is, is what that provides. Yeah, what that provided is just a way for you to have the knowledge of, of you know what? I don't, I'm not using this right now, but when I do use it, I'll remember something. And now I know that what it can and can't do. Or, you know, I kind of remember it did this. Or, you know what? Hey, I don't remember it did that. But it might've, there might have been an update, which there's tons of updates. Might have changed, but I'm pretty sure it does X, Y, Z. So what I'm hearing you say is uh, identify where you want to learn, be intentional about it, and have a plan for how you're going to do it, and then prioritize the time to do it. Make Just make it happen. Yeah. Because um, a lot of people, you know, they, oh, yeah, I want to learn. I want to learn. I mean, we've even had training classes, and where we're covering it for our crew, we're paying for it. And then they don't show up yep. and it's like, okay, I get it. And it's kind of like, and then they just change their mind or what? And it's like, okay, well. <laughs> and half the like, time, I'm sure those are the guys. You, you kind of own your success, right? Yeah. But I'm sure half the time those are the ones, hey, you got any work for me? I, I, I'm looking for work. It's like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. You. So, you know, you just got to commit to getting better because um, there's a lot of people that are, are really hungry to do that and they're looking for the opportunities. Yeah. And and according to you, there's a plethora of them out there, which is really encouraging, which is what I wanted people to hear. There's a lot of different paths to take to train and a lot of opportunities out there. You just got to go be intentional and, and research it and just go do it. Don't ever think it. Yeah. Um, well, how can we attract more people to our industry? Oh, man, that's that's always the hard one, right? How to attract more people. So, I, you know, ideally in my in my world, we need to be more active on what we're doing on the, I'll say marketing because it makes sense, but more active on the outreach side of things. And unfortunately, we're, we're again, in an industry that, that isn't well known, right? We're not lawyers, we're not bankers, we're not accountants, we're not, uh, you know, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, we're the director of this company or the director of that, and like, what does that do? Well, we do video. Oh, so you're a videographer. Uh, no, that's, that's film and, and cinema. Oh, well, you do, you know, I do LED walls. Uh, like concert stuff. Oh, but that's live. I don't really do, I'm rental and staging. You know, like it's, we're in this weird market, so it's, it's hard for us to do that. But I, I think what was really cool during the pandemic is that the Live Events Coalition came out and they started doing some outreach stuff. And on social media, there has been a, a public noticing of us, right? Now we're, we're the people are aware that there's this, there's this industry that's, that's a living of a livable wage, right? To, to work in that is to do the things that you guys get to enjoy. Right. Like these things aren't just built here all the all year round. No, every every venue you go to, every arena you go to, right? There's tons of videos about this now, is a blank canvas and we get to come in and we get to do all kinds of cool stuff inside of it. And I think before that, people just thought this stuff was there all the time. 
and it's not really the case. So we need to expose the next generation to that kind of workflow and that mentality of you can be independent contractor, a freelancer, uh, a small business doing this, right? And here's like ways you can make it happen for yourself. I think right now with, with everything changing in the industry as a whole, with, with at-home work being more acceptable, freelancers being more acceptable, independent contracts being more acceptable by the, by the government as far as businesses and taxes go, that is one step. The second step is to say, hey, there's this industry here that you guys love to watch. Here's how you can make money and live in this industry and do this, this stuff, not just be a part of it and be a consumer, but be, be proactive. And then um, I think what's that kind of, which we're, we're doing that now, right? We're, we're, with the XR and stages and the VR stuff, we're, you're starting to see more behind the scenes content, more behind the scenes stuff being publicly posted and on TikTok and Twitch and Instagram. You're starting to see that more. I think the next step is to say, hey, would you like to do this for a living? Here's what you could make. Here's what, here's some possibilities. And like last week, you guys have a great report you guys put out every year about that. Like those little things and like going to, let's say a school, a, a, a high school or college and saying, hey, here's some stuff that I do. Here's a presentation. Now, unfortunately, I've tried to do this. Schools are very like, we don't know what industry you're in. It doesn't make sense. We also don't offer, we don't offer anything that covers that. So no. And it's like, okay, I get it. Do you have production and theater in these classes? Well, we have this, but we can't have to shut it down. We have this and you know, that you're saying you're not theater. Like, well, we can still do the presentation there. Like there's still, there's a whole market for theater, which is where they rent from us all the time, right? So it's like, we're in this weird niche where we have to make people comfortable with letting us talk about stuff that, that, and showing that, right? And maybe it's, and this is where I don't know stuff. So maybe we have to get more data scientists involved in our industry, get more numbers out there, get more of those things out there. You know, uh, Blackstone recently bought out, you know, all the, you know, PSAB, the, the big the big boys, or PSAB went to Encore and then VR and stuff like that. So maybe getting them, them to get with us and say, hey, how can we use some of your numbers that you guys are putting together to benefit the industry as a whole so we can, we can talk more about this stuff and, and put it more out there into the public and make it more of a mainstream position, not this, you know, uh, you know, like we say in theater, ninjas, right? We're all ninjas because we wear black all the time, but make it more of a mainstream noticing thing. And I think as, as parents yeah. too, we need to talk about it. You know, I take my kid all the time I can. I'll call her on FaceTime and I'll be like, hey, check out my show. And she, she loves seeing this stuff. Hopefully when she gets older, she wants yep. to do it. But if she doesn't, it's cool. Um, but you got to see like as I built in to do things. And I think, you know, we as individuals need to do it more often. If, if an industry of 100,000 plus, I mean, we're probably way huge than that. We're probably in the millions, right? If we all did this and yeah, shared- Yeah, 12 million, doing, actually. 12 million, 12 million right? people. 12 million people in this yeah, industry. Yeah, it's crazy. If, if, one, if all of us did this on a daily basis, just post about our stuff without, without concern, we would make we would definitely be noticed, right? Be like, oh, man, this is yeah. definitely noticeable, right? And I think there are people doing that. There's some fun stuff on TikTok and Instagram that I've seen for people that are, that are trying to get out there and do some fun, content, interesting things. Um, I think a lot of us are just, we're, we're on the technical side. We're not on the creative side too much. Yeah. Uh, and it's yeah. where we, we miss out, but the ones that are kind of both on the technical and the creator side, they're, they're doing content and some of it is really cool to watch. Some of it is like, eh, Hey, I appreciate the information. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right though. I mean, you, you bring up a great point. It's, um, like my, my daughter in elementary school, they had a morning show and in fifth grade, she got to be the producer. She had no idea what it meant. And then I was trying to explain to her, well, that's, that's kind of our customers that we serve, they're in production and here, and she's just looking at me like a deer in headlights, right? Like there's no name to what we do. Yep. And when you say events, they think event planner, which is so important. Um, but events encapsulate so many things. It's, it's the technical, it's the production, it's the security, it's the parking, it's the people checking, you know, your bags and taking your tickets. And there's so many different components to what it takes to produce an event. And I don't think we do a good job, to your point, of naming it, talking about yep. it. I'm going to get on my soapbox. We don't even have our own SIC code. Yes. Um, and that's crazy to me. When, when it comes to workers' comp and general liability insurance, brokers just kind of look at our industry like, I don't know what to do with you. Are you putting furniture together? Like part of what we do is we, we audit workers' comp codes to help our customers save money. And the number of times I've seen those codes, I'm like, pyrotechnic. I'm like, you don't, you don't blow up stuff. Do you? They're like, no, absolutely not. I'm like, well, that's how you're coded. You're paying a fortune because these insurance companies, they don't know what to do with us. We don't even know what to do with ourselves sometimes. Right. It's like, it's always, it's always funny to ask people, you know, uh, well, what do you do? And they kind of are like, I don't really know. Where do I go? How technical do I get? Do I not get technical? Do I give an example of an event and the part I play in it? Because 
there's just no name really for it that really drives home what these great people do. And so I would love to see more people promote it. I would love to see more schools doing morning shows. I think that was so cool. My daughter loved doing it. I think that's a great point you made. Let's put it on the map early on because guess what? Kids go to festivals. They go to concerts. It doesn't have... The- they watch TV. They, they go to Broadway. Like it doesn't have to be a corporate conference, right? Like event production spans so many different things. And every single person is a consumer of these great things. Um, they just don't know what name to put on it, right? Yep. We go to NFL games, go to the MLB, you know, like those are, those are events. Um, and so I think that's a really great call out is we just got to start naming it and familiarizing every single person who will listen to us and could not agree more about Nancy and Dwayne and you. I know you're on the Live Events Coalition board. Just all the work all of you have done. I just really hope everyone continues to support them. Go to their website. I think it's liveeventscoalition.org. $75 to be a minimum. I mean, to be a member, there's that's nothing, right? And all the things that you get and just all the good work you all are doing over there, I just think it's fantastic. So thank you for, for the role you're playing in that. Um, my final question for you that I like to always ask every guest is what do you hope for the future of our industry? Cause I do feel like we have an opportunity to kind of reshape the future of it. So what do you hope for the future of our industry? I hope that 10 years from now, maybe 20 years from now, that there is a more institutionalized way for our industry to function. I'm hoping a lot of things that we're dealing with now are resolved and there is a clear, precise format. If you're going this route, you should do these things. If you're going this route, you should do these things. If you're doing it this way, you should do these things. I really hope in the future that, that that's that's a that's a process and that things are more more centralized. Right now, it's kind of like the Wild West a little bit, where it's chaotic and you can kind of make you know make riches out here um, by being specialized in something, or you can make a bust by trying to specialize in something. It is a lot like the Wild West. There's nothing standard. Everyone does something a little bit different. They sometimes call things something a little yep. bit different and. Uh, I think our industry craves that. I think they they want, they're waiting for someone to step up and say, let's standardize. Here is the path. Let's make it concise. So that way people coming out of college or people wanting to enter, it's not just the big abyss. You know, I don't know what this means. Where do I go? Like, right. here's the entry point. Here's pick a path, right? Do you want audio, video, lighting, yep. Broadway, theater? Like, what are you wanting to do and help them um, really crystallize that? So I think that's a really great call out. I think that's I think that's a great thing to hope for our future. Um, well, I appreciate you. I appreciate the the flag that you have led for many many years. I've been following your things even before I got the chance to meet with you and personally work with you and do some trainings. I thought it was great. I, I remember reading. I think the first time I saw your name was it was a PowerPoint deck that you did that you put on LinkedIn, <laughs> and I was like, wow, no one's talking about this stuff. Like I remember it was, and it was the basics, right? Like. Show up dressed appropriately, oh, put a man. smile on your stage face, one, yes, all the things that are, yeah, but, but they're so overlooked. Yep. Like we, we can't stop talking about it, right? Because that's always going to be things that we need to continue to talk about. And then, okay, once they've mastered that, here are other things you need to think about. Right. Okay, now let's talk about your technical skills. But um, I just so appreciate how you've led our industry that way and talked about things well before others started talking about it. So thank you for your contribution to the industry and training everybody. Um, And I know you have lots of good things coming up. So we're looking forward to continuing to following you. Um, Where can our audience find you should they want to get in touch with you? Yeah. So I mean, first off, thank you for the recognition. I really appreciate that. That means a lot hearing it from you. Uh, If they want to find me, you guys can find me at uh, Evolve Technologies, the director here. You guys can email me directly there. You can find me at AB Educate uh, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube as well. You can reach me out directly there. I'm pretty much accessible through text message, email, uh, messaging services on social media, and almost, almost all the platforms. Uh, just reach out to me. I, Omar's I everywhere. I try to be, I try to be, um, but just, you know, just <laughs> reach awesome. out to me any way you can. Uh, you know, I'm lucky enough that the industry as a whole, uh, is respectful of my time and stuff. So I, you know, give me 24 hours and I'll respond to you. I'm pretty good about talking to people and I'm, I like talking for the most part. Um, you know, if I'm not too busy, but I enjoy well, you're it. a trainer, you're supposed to be talking, right? We're not, we can't learn from you if you're not talking. So yes. you're supposed to be talking. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I like to conversate, you know, hear, hear people's stories, hear about what they got going on and try to help figure out solutions. I, I love problem solving is, is the reality of it. I love this industry because everything's a problem we have to solve. It's all intricate and engineering is, is, is it's always a, it's a new puzzle, right? 
Every time I go into a new show, new gear, new sit in the flow, new process. I mean, it might be similar, but it's always a little bit different because of what I have available to me. So it's all about these puzzles and, and people mm -hmm. come with puzzles and I like to solve. So that's really what I enjoy doing. Yeah. Well, perfect. Well, thanks again for joining us. You know, my takeaways from this episode are, are kind of a couple things. Number one, be intentional, make training a priority. There's no shortage of opportunities that Omar has called out here today. Um, play your role in really advancing our industry. Join the Live Events Coalition. Be a part of it. And also carry the flag. Let's start standardizing some things. Let's start naming things. Let's let's put some order to the chaos, right? Because I think that also will help entice new people. So thank you again, Omar, for being our guest. And uh, that's it for today's Corralling the Chaos. Thanks for having me.